Hey, what's going on ladies and gents? Uh, I actually wanted to take and do this video, or I wanted to take and do this video, so I'm gonna do it now and get it over with while I have the time to. Um, this is about, especially for new people that are coming into this and doing this stuff, uh, about dialing in, AKA tuning your CPUs. Uh, now, a key factor here is, and this goes for both Intel and AMD, it does not matter. You always dial your CPUs into your cooling. That's the only way you can dial a CPU in, is you do it to your cooling. That that, that being said, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna take I'm gonna use AMD for an example here and say let's say you have an AMD CPU that maxes out at 50 watts under load, full load. Your cooling you're gonna want to have at that point in time, you're gonna want to have at least hundred to hundred and fifty. The reason being you want that that window wiggle room there. Um, one, it, it allows you to easily tame the CPU when it comes down to cooling, meaning keep it under control. And two, if you go to upgrade your CPU in the future and it uses more power, you've already got the the power, the, the cooling power to handle it. So that, that also prevents you from having to upgrade your cooling again. And that that goes for this. That goes for both, rather it's an AIO or a custom loop. Same thing for Intel. Say you have a CPU that under full load it maxes out at 200 watts. At that point in time, you want 250 to 300 watts of cooling power. Same thing, wiggle room, it all applies the same way. Now, I will come out and I will say, in the case of uh, going to the BIOS and everything, um, I haven't dialed in an AMD CPU in years, so the BIOS settings may be a bit different. I'm going to keep this very basic so anybody can do it. Um, dialing a CPU, it can go quite in depth, but as I said, I'm going to keep it to the very basic so anybody can do it. Um, now what I'm going to take and do to keep things transparent is nothing fancy at all. No different than if it was a, I've got a 360 millimeter radiator on my CPU, which is the back one. Yes, it's 86 millimeters thick. The thickness does not matter at all. Uh, the more surface area you have, the better cooling you have. This is a 360, so it's no different than if somebody had a 360 millimeter AIO or a 30 millimeter 360 makes no difference at all. If I had a 480, it'd be more surface area, better cooling. Um, but as I said, the back radiator is for the CPU, which there's there's a CPU outline which goes into my my Iceman Direct Eyewater block. Now, if anybody wants to see me do this with an IHS as well to get the results for dialing in, because dialing in versus dialing in for direct dye is different than dialing in for uh, IHS. But the same principles are going to apply. It's just going to be different the results wise. Um, but anyway, that was my out to, that was my outlet from my radiator to my inlet to my water block from my water block out to the reservoir goes around, comes out into my pump back into the back of the radiator right there. Now, with that being said, th those fans there don't really mean nothing. They're just there to be there. As you can see, the AC is not on. It's on fan two which is medium settings, medium out of fan three, which is high. So that would pretty much basically mean that on the end of your case fans, that's on medium to high for your case fans. <clears throat> now, with that being said, on the end of my BIOS settings, uh, I'm running a 14900KF. So on the end of my BIOS settings, how everything's set right now, everything is set on auto. So it's more or less factory. So um, not XMP or nothing like that at all. The BIOS is choosing everything for the CPU. So there's nothing, there's nothing fancy set or nothing at all. Um, so what I'm going to take and do is first, before I even start dialing in the CPU, I got to get my baseline. And how I do that is I'm going to run Cinebench R23 with hardware, hardware info, which is going to give me my, my, uh, core, my core clocks and my temperatures. Um, which yes, now right now it is running a little cool because I actually just boot up the system. It's been sitting for hours for a while, so. Um, but that's that's definitely going to heat up. Um, now the reason why I pick R23 is for the simple fact that both the 13th gen and the 14th gen they shine on Cinebench R23. It's where they work best at. Um, now on the end of the 13th gen and 14th gen, they both thermal throttle at 100 C. So if you get the CPU under full load, if you get it when you dial it in, um, anything from mid 70s to mid 80s, those are your respectable ranges. So with that being said, 
I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna or I'm gonna take. I'm gonna show you. So nothing hiding at all. There, there's. This is my li my live reading. This is my minimum reading, and this is my max reading. And you see my temps there at all, which those are definitely gonna jump because I've the system's cooled down right now. But I'm definitely gonna be introducing heat to it in a minute. <clears throat> So with that being said, I'm gonna run to get my baseline. And this is without me tuning it at all. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna dial the CPU in, tune it, I'm gonna dial it into the cooling through the BIOS and you're gonna see it. The reason why I don't take and I don't like using the Intel tuning utility is for the simple fact of you can overclock on the fly. I don't like doing that reason being that's not telling you that you're stable to boot up with. Me personally, my opinion, I like to tune through the BIOS so that way there I know if the system is booting up, which is already under load booting up, when it's booting up, I'm good to go. So if I get stable to boot up and stable to do a benchmark run, then I'm good to go. Now in this case, I'm not going to, I don't care about the Cinebench score, I'm just showing you how to dial in. So I'm, I'm going to run this a few times to get some heat into the loop. Because realistically, it's not too ambient right now, so I'm gonna. It it's, it is ambient, but it's not ambient. If that makes sense. I'm gonna run this one more time, and then I'm gonna jump to BIOS and I'm gonna start making the changes. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it very basic so anybody can do it. Start. Oh, and that white smoky substance that you see, it is not smoke, it is actually my vape. This is my disposable one that I was talking about last night. Alright, that's good enough. So now I'm going to restart it and go into BIOS, and you're going to see all the changes I make. I'm going to do everything live. This is what I like about raw and uncut. This is what I like about shooting content that's raw and it's uncut. Because there's nothing being hidden, you're seeing everything done. And there we go, now I'm in my BIOS, and as you see, everything here is all auto. There's nothing special. So the BIOS is controlling everything. Now I'm going to start changing stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is go to ASUS Multicore Enhancement, disable it, remove all limits. Then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to start at 5.5 gigahertz. It's going to be 5.5 gigahertz, and I'm going to go all the way up to 5.9 gigahertz, because that's, that's where... I'm happy with. I'm going to go to AVX related controls, do the per core limit, ratio limit, user specify 5. I always change that to 5. And the DIGI VRAM plus VRAM, which it goes into your low line calibration. Now, what low line calibration is that that's your VDROOP. And what VDROOP is, is it tells, it, it's telling the system how much voltage to throw at the CPU under load so when it's not under load it takes all the power away when you hit this when you hit the CPU with a load it throws the power at it I usually run anywhere between 5 and 6 so with this I'm gonna run at, I'm gonna run at level 5 then I'm gonna come down here to I'm gonna leave the ring bin leave this all along as I said I'm gonna keep keeping it very basic I'm not gonna touch the voltage at all right now I'm just gonna run it once at 5.5 well, well with the settings that you see me change which there's a setting that changed right there the ASUS multi-core enhancement you see I, I changed that to remove all limits the performance core ratio synchronize all cores change that to 5.5 AVS control per core ratio user specify which that's at number five and then the low line calibration from auto to level five and then I'm gonna restart it Then I'm gonna run this benchmark. See where see where I sit at now with the with those settings. See where I sit at my temp ranges, and then I'm gonna drop my voltage down. And once I drop it down, and I get a pass benchmark off my first one that I drop down, I'm gonna start raising that voltage. I'm gonna start. Wait, no, that's fine. That's, that's right. Stupid me. I 
I don't know why I'm doing that. But once I run the benchmark and I pass and I see where I'm at for my temperatures wise and stuff like that, then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go back to the BIOS and start raising the the, the P core clocks up. In this case, I do not care about the P. I do not care about the efficiency cores because the efficiency cores are for light uh, light workloads such as background stuff like that. So I don't care about those. Those mean zero to me. What I care about is the P cores, which is the performance cores, power cores, however you want to say it. That's what I care about here because those handle your heavy workloads. So I will show you really quick. Again, keeping everything transparent. There you go, you see me at 5.5 gigahertz. This is, the, this is the current, this is what I'm doing live. This is the minimum and this is the maximum. So my main goal to, for dialing in, I'm aiming for mid 70s, mid 80s with the lowest possible uh, voltage that I can run at 5.9 gigahertz, all P cores. Um, now here's the kicker, depending on the quality of the bin of, of your CPU, this goes again for both Intel and AMD. The better the bin, the less voltage it's gonna to require to push. The worse the bin, the more voltage it's gonna to require to push, the harder it will be to push. That being said, let's run this and see what see where we're at. And there's the temperatures right there, as you can see them. Still got amazing working room to go. And there's your 5.5 gigahertz all cores. And I don't care about Cinebench scores right now, I'm just dialing the CPU in. Now I'm gonna go back and raise my core clocks up. Raise up to one would be 5.6 gigahertz. All right, actually, my apology. No, I'm going to drop my voltage down. I'm going to start at 1.34 volts. That's where I'm going to be. That's where I'm going to go to. That's the only thing I'm going to change right now. I'm going to leave it at 5.5 gigahertz. It's to me, my opinion, that that's a very good number to start at with the 13th gen and 14th gen. So I'm going to leave it at 5.5, and I'm going to come down here to the CPU voltage manual. It's at 1.34 already. Okay, good. So now I'm going to run that. Make sure that passes. Once that passes, then I'm going to start raising up the core clocks till it fails. My ultimate goal is to go 5.9 gigahertz all cores. I get a mouthful of coffee here. Got to keep the palate wet. Pretty sure you all know how that goes. I may, have quit, I may have quit the smoking, but I'm not dropping the coffee. I mean, for what it's worth, I like vaping over smoking anyway. Besides the fact it's cheaper, it tastes really good. All right, so now we're going back into Cinebench again. R23. And, I, and back when I was doing um, 3D mark runs, I was doing the exact same thing CPU-wise, and the same thing goes for GPU-wise. Run it. And as you see it passed, zoom in so you can see those temperatures. Well, there, ah, there's the clocks, 5.5 all cores. There's the temperatures, which is still good. That's beautiful. I'd be better off just taking the phone, just taking my phone off this each time. It'd be a lot easier for me. Now I'm gonna go back to BIOS again. And just raise up the clock again. Just keep doing it till it fails. Then once it fails, that tells me I gotta raise up the voltage. Now once I get it, once I get it to where I can't go any farther with the voltage and the clocks, etc., etc., because the 
how it's set up. I can go more in depth with it with the ring up bin, ring down bin, the low line calibration, stuff like that. But that's more advanced stuff. I'm covering the very, very basic so anybody can do this. There, 5.5. Let's see, go back up to that. Change that to 5.6. And the same gig applies to AMD as well. It's just rinse and repeat. This is not as hard as people make it out to be. Once you learn, if you don't know your BIOS layout, yes, it's going to take you a minute to find things and get used to doing things. But once you learn your BIOS layout, you're going to be flying right through this. I could typically dial CPU in fully in about an hour for daily usage. Now, for actually pushing overclocks for lists, that's hours and hours and hours of work. But it's fun. Open up hardware info, open up Cinebench. That's open, that's open. Right off the bat, run it. And as, as I'll keep showing you guys this each time so you can see I'm not hiding nothing at all. There's the 5.6 gigahertz all cores. There's the temperatures maxed out for that voltage in those cores, which I'm in very respectable ranges right now. Very, very respectable. Let's say I'm going all the way up to 5.9 gigahertz all cores. And as I need to, I will up the voltage. No, I don't want the screen the screenshot. to the core clocks do five seven as you see the only thing I changed was the core clock so we're gonna go to OK and boot it I'm gonna try to keep this under 30 minutes but I don't really see it happening too much so I'm trying to go as fast as I can here but for those of you who stick around throughout the whole video I greatly appreciate it and I want to thank you ahead of time for that I mean, sooner or later, even the new people to this, they're going to have to learn how to do this. So, the, hence why I'm showing just the very basics. I can go way more in depth with this, but Lord only knows how many people are going to get confused. And I'm not trying to confuse anybody. As the saying goes, you got to learn to walk before you, or as the saying goes, you got to learn to crawl before you can walk. Right off the bat, just run it. I already know it's going to pass according to the temperatures. Well, I already know what the CPU runs at, so I already know it's going to pass. But there you go, it's a pass benchmark. There's proof right there five seven all cores still very respectable <clears throat> so what's that mean you go back to bios and up the clock even more just keep on upping it till it crashes and when i get to the point to where it crashes i up the voltage and then say say it, let's just say it passes let's just say it fails or 5.9 gigahertz it just passes at one point 43 volts you would put at 1.45 reason being you're giving yourself that added wiggle room for temperature or voltage wise go right down here 5.8 
right off the bat. As you see, the only thing I changed was the core clock, 5.7 to 5.8, restart it. Again, right off the bat, shooting right to center bench R23 and hardware info. Open it up. I'm not even waiting, gonna run it instantly. Not even gonna wait. Now, the reason why I'm not waiting is for the simple fact that even when it boots up, it's under load, so it built this the system is building up heat when it loads up so I'm not waiting I'm, ke I'm keeping that heat going keeping the heat flow going not giving it a break but there we go take this off and there you go you see it again 5-8 all cores again I don't care about the E cores this is all about the P cores there's your temperature still very respectable as I said your respectable ranges is mid 70s mid 80s that's very respectable for the 13th and 14th gen they don't thermal throttle till you hit 100c so again I'm gonna again go back to BIOS and up the clock even more it's just a rinse and repeat that's all this game is Now another reason why I'm not going to bother in this video going into low line calibration and stuff like that is because low line calibration also plays, also coincides with the voltage. So if you adjust the low line calibration, you're adjusting your voltage. They both play together. Go up to 5.9. As you see, the only thing I changed was the core clock. Because realistically, 5.9 all P cores is my daily. That's what I run daily. It's more than enough for me. Can I push past it? Yes. Although the, the SP on the CPU is only 95, it'll take a little bit more to push. But as long as I stay, my whole goal is to stay out of the 90s range. As long as I stay out of the 90s range, I'm fine. Now, in the case of benchmarking for lists and stuff, that's a whole different story. Run right in the Cinebench. Again, not giving it no break at all. Open, start. Drag this over here, right off the bat, just hit it. <clears throat> not giving it no break at all. There you go, as you see, completed benchmark, benchmark run for those of you who care about the score, 42, 42, 161, which I don't care about the score right now, I'm just dialing it in, 5.9 gigahertz, still very respectable ranges, I can still push it more. Keep in mind, this is at 1.34 volts. So my, my cooling is doing more than, my cooling is definitely showing it's weight or worth the money right now it's showing it's it's showing it's worth and another big thing that's helping too is my iceman direct die block it's a beast of a block worth to every penny none of my other blocks can do what this block is doing right now none of my other blocks at 1.34 volts would run 1.59 um, uh, gigahertz all my other blocks is 1.45 volts at 1.59 gigahertz So just for shits and giggles, throw it up to 6 gigahertz. If it fails, I don't care. If it does, if, if it fails, I don't care. If it doesn't, I don't care. It's whatever, because I'm not planning on pushing 6 gigahertz. So I'm fine at 
I'm just here. This will run at at this voltage at this speed. If it does, like I said, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Do I think it's going to? I want to say no, but it could prove me wrong because this Iceman block has done a good job of impressing me since the day I've had it. It was like I've been doing, not even get no break as soon as hardware info opens up, bam, bang, off right with the benchmark right away. There you go, see, I, there we go, it crashed, because I don't have enough voltage for that. I don't have enough voltage for that uh, speed, so I'm not worried about it. 1.34 volts at 5.9 gigahertz all cores is pretty crazy. But 96, would, right there, is pushing it. So what I'm gonna take and do is I'm gonna dial it back one more time and make sure that the 5.9 gigahertz at 1.34 volts works. I'm gonna do that one more time and then if it does, that'll be that. I'll be dialed in for daily usage at 1.59 volts, or 1.59 gigahertz at 1.34 volts. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna take and do is because I've seen people say it in groups on Facebook and just on YouTube and in general, I've seen people say, you put too much voltage to a CPU, it'll kill it. This, no, it will not. CPUs are, for years have been designed with sensors in them where if you put too much voltage to them, they won't even run. Um, and in that case, I'm going to take it, I'm going to prove it because I'm going to do it myself after I make sure this runs again. So there's the, there's the core limit, 5.9, and there's the voltage, 1.34 volts. As you see, it's the only thing I changed went from 6.0 back down to 5.9. I'll go back, run the benchmark again. After that, I'm going to crank that voltage just to prove a point. I'm going to crank that voltage up to 1.80 volts. And then I'm going to run it back. And I'm going to throw all that voltage at the CPU to prove it's not going to kill the CPU. And then uh, the benchmark is going to fail. I already know that. Um, and then once it fails, I'll go back, drop it back down to 1.34. And go back and run the benchmark again, showing you that it passes no problem. Um, you can you can take and you can run a CPU hot, but I highly recommend that you do not do it for simple fact. If you run a CPU hot for an extended period of time, you will shorten its lifespan. That that that's just a fact. Um, now I'm not telling you to do it. There's a reason why I'm doing it because it's on me. If something happens, it's on me. Um, if you go do if you go trying to do it and you screw up your CPU, that ain't my problem. I'm not telling you to do it. There's a reason why I did it. So again, open that up, open up hardware info. And right off the rip, I'm not gonna give it any breaks as I've been doing. Start it right off the rip. <clears throat> as long as this passes, then I'll save the bio settings and then I'll crank up the voltage and show you. All right, that passed right there. I'm, my highest temperature is right there, core number three at 81C, which I will show you. There's your 5.9 gigahertz all cores. And let me move the mouse out of the way. There you go, 81C was my highest core. Which that, that's, a, that's very respectable right there for those clocks, very respectable. And that's ambient temps right now. So now I'm going to jump back to the BIOS and crank that voltage to prove that point. Nice of the water. Good old quality H2O. Can't beat a good old bottle of water. I'm gonna go right down here. Actually, I wanna save that profile first. User profile, I had already had it saved, but I'm gonna save it again, just for my own comfort. Down here to 134, now I'm gonna put 180 in, you see 180 right there, it's in the red, which is danger zone. You shouldn't be running these temps at all, or these voltages at all, unless you're doing dry ice or LN2, as you can see right there, 134 to 180. Okay, let's do it. Let's boot up to with a hundred with one point eighty volts. 
again, I'm not telling anybody to do this. If you do this, you're doing this at your own risk. I'm doing this because if something happens, it's on me. If you do it and something happens, that's 100% on you. Don't even attempt to blame me saying that I told you something or whatever. No, I'm not telling you to do nothing. That'd be 100% on you. I'm doing this on my own risk. I'm just showing, all I'm proving is the CPU won't blow up. That's all I'm showing. Go into Cinebench, open up hardware info. Cinebench is opened up. Hardware info is opened up. Uh, Cinebench acting stupid. There we go, that's better. Right off the rip, running again. This should fail. But it's gonna overvolt the shit out of the CPU. It should fail. There you go, it failed. Like I said, now I'll restart it. I just ran it at 1.80 uh, volts. There you go, it didn't explode. Now go back into BIOS and bring it back to 1.34 volts and run. go back in again and run that benchmark again. If it passes, I'm good to go. As you see, you see me doing everything live right in front of you. No, no cutting corners, no editing, no nothing. 1.34. As you see it right there, 1.80 to 1.34. Brought it back down where it ran with no problem. Reboot it to 1.34 volts. I run that benchmark back again. As long as it passes, we're good to go. I'll run that. I'll run this 1.34 volts back to back a few times to show you the stability. So rather you're running air cooling or water cooling, the dialing in goes the same way. You're just dialing into your cooling. That's all you're doing. And yes, thermal paste plays a huge role in this because you want to be able to transfer that heat as fast as you can to your cooling. So that, which is why I use liquid metal because you can't get no better. So the last thing that I want is my thermal paste holding me back from taking advantage of my cooling. I open up Cinebench, open up hardware info. Right off the rip, I won't even wait for Cinebench to fully load. I'll just, I won't even wait for hardware info to fully load. I'll just run Cinebench right off the bat. So I'll run this back to back a couple, a few times, and as long as it passes a few times, probably two or three times, I'll run it back to back. Proves its stability, I'm good to go. Which I already know is stable. I've already ran all this before. I, th th these are my daily settings. Well, except for more in-depth tuning that I do. So I'm running it back to back. I'm mid. I'm mid seventies. Just breaking ADC on core three. So I'm. I'm in beautiful temp ranges right now. So I'm just running it back to back to back. Run it one more time and that'll be that for that. <clears throat> My highest temperature there was on core three at 81C. I think this is the fourth, yeah, the third or fourth time I ran this. I'm not, I'm not counting. I just keep on running it. <clears throat> but there you go. I think that's three or four times I just ran that back to back to back. But there you go. Five point nine gigahertz all cores and the highest core. Temp was 82C at core two, which is per which is extremely respectable. That is beautiful. Now I'll just take I'll just give you I'll just give you a little tip off here. When you're dialing in a CPU, say your CPU on the end of Intel, say you get it on the P cores, five six all cores, and you start dialing back the the voltage and you hit it where it fails. Let's say it fails at 1.33 volts. 
and you go to 1.34 volts and it passes bring up to 1.35 volts the reason being you're given you're giving yourself that wiggle room insurance wise so the cpu has um it's room to take and give what it needs that's the whole purpose behind that because with with your low line calibration being set at five and or six or whatever your comfort level is there once you learn how to do that because you have to collaborate your load line calibration in with your voltage once you get that collaborated in once you get it worked together is if you if you mess with your low line calibration you have to mess with your voltage they they play together they, they work as a team so um well, once you get all that set, according to your low line calibration, as I said, say it works at the one, say you failed the benchmark at 5.5 gigahertz or 5.3 gigahertz at 1.34 volts, but you pass it at 1.35 volts, bring it up to 1.36, because then you're giving yourself your, your wiggle room for your daily usage. And outside of that, I mean just about to hit 36 minutes into this is pretty much how you dial in a cpu to your cooling i kept it as basic as possible you guys see me make all the setting all the changes to get where i got i completely destroyed what it was doing from factory to show you the garbage tuning on the factory i got more out of the cpu with less voltage i mean yes yeah, some would call it under voltage under volting but I'm, I, I wouldn't call it undervolting. I'm actually dialing it in to what it can do according to the bin and according to how the BIOS is set up. Um, but with that being said, again, if anybody would like to see me do this video again with an IHS, uh, because this, is being, this has been done with the Direct Dye Iceman water block and delitted. Uh, since I know a lot of people out there do not do delitted, they do run off of IHS. If you'd like to see me, see this video done again with an IHS, I've got a few of them here. Let me know. I'll be more than happy to do it for you. And you'll see the different results, and it's the same exact principle. It's just with an IHS. But uh, 30, 37 minutes in, this video went a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but you can only go as fast. You can only go so fast with it. But with that being said, um, that that's how you tune aka dial in a cpu to your cooling which this applies to both intel and amd the only difference is your bios layout may be different that's really about the only difference um and no i didn't touch the ram and the things i didn't care about the ram and is ram is ram most people don't even play around ram they throw it on xfp and just let it go um but yeah so as you see it's not that hard it's just a matter of going back and forth with that being said hopefully everybody's having a good day night evening wherever it is you're at i'm out later